Act 28, 2003. Um, if we would start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, tonight we have no adjustments to the agenda that I am aware of right now. Okay. Um, and an approval for the June school board minutes. Does anyone have any questions or the minutes are fine? Okay. Um, then we can move on to communications. Uh, just a few notes under communications that I for the public also that, that in your report, um, you have the annual report on volunteer services. And just to make note of the extremely high level and how that number seems to be growing. And, and we are very fortunate to have the volunteers. And I know in each one of our buildings, uh, they have their recognition days and all. Uh, but I, when I did go through that report, um, which we receive every year, we do have a very high level of volunteerism in our schools. Um, also, um, there's a letter from the Department of Education regarding the special education program uh, review. Um, just to make note that we did receive full program approval. I think it was a very positive, um, a positive letter. And I think that process, uh, when they came to visit, went, went very, very well. Our special ed education programs um, came out very high. In, in, in talking to the people who came down to review, they felt very good about our programs. Um, also in there, you have a report from the, the middle school on fundraising, college admission report, which comes annually. Um, and um, unfortunately, there also are the official letters of resignation from school board members Kathy Walsh and George Entwistle. And that's why it seems so empty up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I have a few things. Actually, the school board met on August 22nd, um, and, and we met primarily to discuss the building project and the school board's responsibilities um, between now and the referendum on November 4th. Um, we met tonight at 6 o'clock um, to discuss school board goals for the following year. Um, we, are, we, we didn't finish, so we will carry this to our next meeting. Um, we, will, we will total up the things that we discussed um, and take that a little further next month. Um, and also, the building committee that was put together by the town council, um, which is to have three school board members, three town council members, and three community members, um, those people have been decided on. And for the school board, Myself, Ann Belden, and Elaine Maloney will represent the school board on this committee. The town council members will be Mary Ann Lynch, David Backer, and Jack Roberts. And the community members will be Sue Pierce, Jim Rowe, and Liam McGraw. Um, our intent is to schedule a meeting to bring these nine people together, along with Tom and Mike McGovern, at the end of September, the beginning of October, to establish a chairperson for this committee. And the work will really begin after the referendum. Um, so that's where we are uh, with the building committee. Um, are there any other communications that anyone has? That's it? OK. Um, comments from the public? We have I haven't received any. OK. Um, then we move on to recognition um, of our former school board members. And George is here tonight. Mm -hmm. Do we want to? We'll move down, and we have also have another recognition for a uh, staff member. Okay.
I'd like to start with um, a recognition uh, of one of our administrators, actually, who has been selected at, uh, by, uh, as an Apple Distinguished Educator. Um, and I'm going to read, before we present the award, um, what this award, a little bit about what this award is all about. And Gary Lenoy um, has been uh, selected as an Apple Distinguished Educator and into that program. Um, and the Apple Distinguished Educator Program is a relationship program that's focused on educational excellence and leadership. An Apple Distinguished Educator is a member of a select group of K-12 and higher education professionals possessing an identified expertise in educational technology. And there are, the letter goes on and on about the, the characteristics that they're looking for. And then they did send a letter uh, to Gary um, dear Gary, welcome to the Apple Distinguished Educator Program Class of 2003. As an ADE, new title for you, Gary, um, you are a member of a select group of education professionals passionately committed to the promise of educational technology in the classroom and beyond. We are thrilled that you will join Apple as an advocate, advisor, and content developer during your association with the ADE program. The Apple Distinguished Educator Program provides a unique forum for Apple and exemplary educators worldwide to exchange ideas and information about the effective uses of new technologies in the creation of engaging learning environments that promote student achievement. The class of 2003 represents a very talented cross-section of educators, administrators, and technologists. We know we, you, you will use this network of amazing individuals as peers, mentors, and friends for years to come. So as a school district, we just wanted Gary to know how much we appreciate uh, the work he does and how much we agree with what, what Apple has done in recognizing Gary. So we would like to present on behalf of the school board a certificate of outstanding accomplishment in recognition of your distinction of being selected as an Apple Computer Distinguished Educator. Through this accomplishment, you serve as a positive role model for the entire Cape Elizabeth School community. In appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board, signed Marie Prager and Tom Priscilla. So Gary, come up. As an Apple Distinguished Educator, I got a chance to go out to California, spend a week with about 100 other people that were selected from around the country. Actually, uh, people from outside the country, too. There's one person there from France and two or three from Australia and New Zealand. So to meet people like that from around the country, it's a wonderful network. Um, I just got an email from one of those people this evening asking about how things were going with the laptop. They're doing a laptop one-to-one -one initiative just now. And we've shared some things, and we plan to share some things back and forth. So it's, it's great. I think it'll be great for the district. Um, it's, uh, I'm humbled by, by the uh, presentation and to be included with a group of people like that. And uh, look forward to uh, continuing and benefiting Cape Elizabeth as well as, uh, as Apple Computer. Thanks. And we also, as was stated in our communication, um, had two school board members who uh, left us after our last meeting. And tonight, um, we're honoring uh, George Entwistle. Um, George was on the board for seven years, I think, two complete terms, and then left uh, into his third term. And. Um, I know George was, I, I think George was the chair when I, when I came on board. Um, and I think a lot of the positive movement the board has made over the last several years is attributable uh, to George's leadership. And he really did um, serve the board well as a chairperson for um, a number of those years that, that, that he was here. Um, and as a superintendent, I can say I really appreciate all the time, energy, effort, and expertise that, that George Entwistle brought to this, brought to this, not only school board, but to the whole um, Cape Elizabeth learning community. Which one, um, George, I, I've known George ever since I've been on the board, 
and i have to say that george has been very instrumental in getting the board to where they are today with his leadership abilities and his directness of getting us all involved and all working together as a team i think he's done a tremendous job in the relationship not only with all the other school board members but with the superintendent and with the administration and george i have to say that yesterday um at the uh meeting that we had at varillo's or not yesterday the day before um there were several people who uh several staff members who came up to me saying what are we going to do without george and i thought oh no i don't know i said you know we're freaking out as much as you are um but we we certainly um we certainly are going to miss you and and george has done tremendous things i think in terms of contract negotiations with teachers and where we stand today and i think that's one of the things that he can be proudest of um in terms of how the school board deals with the the staff with the teaching staff and through contract negotiations um and there are many things that he's done um and we are really going to miss you but but we know you'll be terrific in your new role so george we have a little something for you Well, I felt, do you guys want to go yeah. sit up there? Okay. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> I used to move the meetings along, but now that I have control here, I don't know. Um, I, I walked in, I felt so weird walking in tonight, because I felt really unprepared. I didn't have my packet, I hadn't read anything. It was kind of strange. But, um, in my current responsibilities, I was explaining uh, as I came in that I'm, I'm first off, I'm, things are going great. And I'm just having a blast, and I'm very excited. But this is a this is a school district that is really consists of a um, school administrative district, a consolidated school district, and a school union. George, and, you might want to tell people what you're doing. Oh, as, okay. As assistant superintendent for the Five Town uh, Community School District and MSAD 28, which is Camden Rockport. Um, so even that is a mouthful. You can see it's a complicated um, district, and the important thing is each one has their own school board. So you can imagine that there are just a lot of school board meetings. And this happened to be the one week that I was scheduled not to be at a school board meeting. So. This now nicely fills that void that I've been <laughs> feeling. Um, I guess um, I, I guess I, I never would believe where I am right now uh, in terms of my career, and um, it's really nice to hear you say that people were missing me or appreciating me. But um, this opportunity to serve on the board has done so much for me personally in terms of um, just having such a, a great sense of accomplishment and certainly leading me in a place that I never thought that I would be. Um, the, the experience really on the board was extraordinary and I guess what I would want to say if uh, there's a public out there listening is I, I really hope that people will step to the plate it looks very sad up here. I, 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 it, it's um, it, it's to too low, <laughs> and there's opportunity for, for some great contributions, and uh, working with these great people that are already up there. Um, you know, it's it's the what's made the experience so terrific is a great community that supports education. Um, I think town officials that are really dedicated and responsive to the needs. Um, an extraordinary and motiv uh, extraordinary and, and very motivated and very talented um, faculty and staff, um, an outstanding leadership team uh, here, uh, very bright and effective folks that have come together and, and do such a great job in terms of leadership. Um, I think Tom is clearly a top-notch uh, superintendent, and um, my experience on the board 
and particularly working with Tom, has put me in good stead now for this, um, this hot seat that I sometimes find myself in. Um, and then I think the talented and, and very hardworking and very respectful um, group of board members. Um, it's, it was just a great experience um, and uh, just, a, just a real learning experience, but, but I think just a tremendous team. People with very diverse views, but very respectful and really working well and moving things forward. And, and it was just a, a, just a terrific pleasure and I thank you. Okay, now I guess we're, we're out of the ballpark for a 20-minute meeting yeah, tonight, right? She's oh. And I, George. Yeah, <laughs> George didn't want you to break his record. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, now we can move on to the superintendent's report, uh, notification of resi resignations. There are a number of items, and I'll go quickly uh, through them. Most of them are just to, to let you know we did have two um, resignations since we met in June, Betsy DeGroff and Erica Stump, both at the high school. Um, you also have in your packet, um, as you um, did in, the, in, in June, gave me the authority to hire. Well, those are the people that we hired uh, over the summer. So those, that list is there. Um, what I'd like to do is we don't need a motion, um, but just to read them into the, into the record, if I can find the individuals. New hires. At Pond Cole School, uh, Karen Dow, grade one, Jackie Petrillo, special education, Sarah Safer, grade one, Deborah Sampson, kindergarten point five position, and Linda Sigman, grade one. At the middle school, Rebecca Bean, uh, general and choral music, Anne Marie Dion, world language, and Kathy Walsh, grade five. At the high school, Carrie Aponovich, Social Studies, Elaine Brassard, Special Education, Karen Dyer, Ceramics, a point two position, Mia Jordan, Special Education, Erica Kent, English, Karen Lamb, English, Elizabeth Milroy, Special Education, a one year position, Mary Poker Page, Social Studies, a point four position, Kristen Thomas, Choral Music, point six position, Jonathan Whitehead, physics and math. At the system-wide level, Kristen Freve, occupational ther therapist, Maureen Messer, occupational therapist, and Kristen Rollins, school psychologist. That's the position that we're sharing um, with uh, Cumberland. Those were all positions that were approved in the, in the budget also. Um, we also will have a short report, I think. Sue, anything on the summer recreation program? While some of you were off um, enjoying the summer, we were busy with our recreation programs. I think school ended on Thursday the 12th, and we started our first camp on Monday the 16th, and we finally wrapped up our last camp just night before last. So we actually did 11 weeks of programming this summer. And, um, but folks are always looking for more. We had a great summer. Um, I'd like to begin with some of the st st uh, statistics we had in the different camps. Uh, we were very fortunate to have all of our camp directors back this year. And that sure makes for an easy transition in terms of um, relating to new staff and orienting them. Um, we didn't have to orient the administrators, so we got off to a very good start. We, um, we had a good staff this year. We had a, had a great um, combination of educators, um, parents in the community, college students, um, terrific high school students that served as junior counselors and CITs. Um, we were a staff of 135. Um, we had a good mix of male and females, and um, we also had people with diverse interests, and I think that kept um, all of the kids coming back and, and wanting to be part of the program. I always like to um, 
assess the success of the program by how many kids come back and i think this year we had lots of repeat customers not many kids dropped in for a week and and didn't return um, the numbers show that um, most kids or we had an average of, of, of kids participating in at least three different programs the preschool certainly showed the effects of what we are projecting to be higher numbers in that our preschool program had 270 um, enrollments with 112 different kids. Um, that's much higher than in the past. We reached maximum enrollment in the preschool program every single week and had waiting lists of up to 12. So certainly the demographics that we know to be true um, certainly you know, uh, showed in the, in the summer program. Our day camp, um, which is grades one through five, had 489 different children and uh, with an average daily attendance of 300. So that was a pretty busy camp um, and just a terrific staff. Um, Gary um, and Charlie, our middle school counterparts, directed that camp and, and just did you know a terrific job. Our middle school camp, um, enrollment was down a little bit this year. Um, in the past, we have reached maximum enrollment. This year, we averaged about 55. Um, with our maximums being about 60. Um, we did accommodate 105 different kids in the program. Um, and I think next year we may be looking at um, how many eighth graders we had, do we need to change our configuration of camps and so forth. Um, but I also think the reason that that program was down a little was because of the success of our capability camps. We had 553 middle school age population um, enrollments in that camp and that was 365 different kids. So that's a fairly significant number of middle school students. We had 17 camps um, that reached maximum enrollment and we added one new camp because the waiting list were, was so high in that particular area and that new camp we added was called Raft and Ride. Um, and that was a huge success, it was a combination of whitewater rafting and horseback riding camp. Um, and then we expanded three other camps that just had huge waiting lists. We added, um, put extra staff on and expanded the golf camps. Um, we expanded the kayaking camps um, just to help accommodate the large waiting lists. Um, we still turned away over 50 kids on waiting lists for capability camps. We did cancel five camps due to insufficient enrollment. Those were camps that um, typically have gone in the past. One of them was diving, and um, we did not have sufficient enrollment there. We canceled the younger boys basketball camp called Basketball Bonanza. We were looking to have at least 24 kids, and um, we ran a little short of that with about 17. And, um, and because of the group dynamics and wanting four teams, it just didn't seem to work. So we did not do that camp. And um, a preseason performance camp, athletes advantage camp um, were also canceled. Uh, we did do four soccer camps. We had 168 um, participate in our play soccer camp, 55 in our major league soccer camp. And then we had our two varsity coaches run what we call preseason middle school camps. Um, 25 in the girls program and 31 in the boys programs and those sort of wound down this week. We had 81 um, in preschool swim lessons, so it's good to know that the, the preschool population now are swimmers in Cape Elizabeth. And um, our total registrations, and of course this is including duplications, kids doing more than one thing, but our total number of registrations for the summer was 3,463 and total number of participants with no duplication was 1,161 um, kids involved in the summer program. So um, it was a great summer, it was a great success. Um, although you may not have felt the weather was great, um, we had one, only one washout day of camp and um, you know, things were great. I think some of our capability camps um, experienced some wet weather, however, up in the mountain area, so they didn't quite have as, as good a, a weather summer as we did, but um, it was a great summer. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm interested in the, the preschool um, programs that you were talking about. Now, is that a certain age or an age range? 
we have two rooms we have a four year old program and parents have choices as to whether or not they send their child three days two days three days or five days so they may have a two day three day or five day option that's one room where we um, max out at twenty students per day the other classroom is kindergarten prep they commit to a five day a week program and um, they take 25 kids a day, and those kids are all entering kindergarten. So this could be then for four-year-olds and five-year-olds, correct? One group of four-year-olds, one, one group of, of five-year-olds. Of kindergarten prep kids. So when you say that you had 112 kids this year. Different kids in the two programs. OK. Um, how does that compare to the past couple of years? Do you? Well, we sort of. Um, we changed the structure of the preschool program a couple of years ago. One of the things that we always offered in the preschool program were swim lessons. Um, and it became um, sort of a nightmare to have our three staff take, or six staff take 50 kids to the pool. Um, it seemed like the whole day revolved around getting them ready for swim lessons and getting them dressed after swim lessons. So we made, um, we made a decision the year the pool was closed that um, when we reopened, we would not include swim lessons as part of the preschool program. And I think that the first year, people were disappointed we didn't do that. And um, I think, therefore, our enrollment was down. We also used to require that they come all five days, whether they were a four-year-old or not. We didn't give them a two-day, three-day, or five-day option, which we're doing now. So I, th I think that certainly boosted our numbers. Um, some kids aren't ready for five days. Parents chose the two-day option. Lots chose the three-day, and some chose the five. But it just gave them more flexibility in their schedule. So we have not been this full ever. You know, I attribute it to one more kids, two um, the options that we're presenting to the parents are a little bit more flexible a little bit more flexible. Okay. And the, the reason that I'm asking is because I know, you know, in kindergarten, just this year for fall, we've had to add um, a half-time teacher. And in the spring, our projections were 93 kindergarten students, and we are at 119, and, and that's where we were in the spring. So that's a significant jump. Um, and we might want to keep looking at your preschool numbers sure. um, in terms of where our projections are going, you know, in the next few years, if that could help us. Okay, great. Other questions? Well, I'm just taking rough numbers, but if you had 1,100 kids and we have roughly 1,700 in the school system, that's K-12, mm -hmm. that's about 65%. Right, and that did um, include preschoolers, preschool right. swim lessons, but we don't preschool have any seniors who are going to um, and we don't really have many juniors on the education, so you're really talking a population of four-year-olds up through 14-year-olds would be the but bulk of, still, of I that mean, group. Roughly 65% so. of the kids in town who take advantage, which is great. I mean, that's considering people travel and go elsewhere. And well, I think the other thing is too is is that you can move in and out of the program. You don't have to commit to more than one trip or one week and then maybe another week, two or three weeks, so you can plan, you know, alternate vacations around and still participate in the program. <laughs> I think the options are varied enough that a lot of kids do take advantage. Mm -hmm. okay. That okay. it for Sue? That's it. Thank you, Sue. Thanks. Um, next on, uh, under my report, there's an update on the readiness of facilities, which Pauline usually does. Um, she's not able to be here. She is at a workshop, an all-day workshop in, in Belfast, and has not returned. Um, but this year, I think we're, we, we are probably in the best shape we've been in several years, <coughs> due mainly to the fact because of this, the, the time we got out of school. We gained a week because we didn't have any snow days last year. The custodians gained um, probably four or five days. And plus, um, not bringing the, the, the students back till after Labor Day. This was a long, a longer summer. Um, so I think that that extra time really helped. Um, and in talking to the custodians and um, the principals, will probably might in their reports talk about that also. But the buildings are, are in pretty good shape, and they're able to get a lot done. 
because of that, that extra time we had. This show was a good summer, and, the, and the, no big problems, and the building's looking in very good shape. Uh, just a quick update on No Child Left Behind. Um, we, we are learning more and more about this um, as we go through the years. Um, but one change uh, as far as main um, assessments and what we are going to report in terms of our assessment plan, there has been a change, re change rather than um, utilizing the local assessment system and the plans for each district to be the reporting measure for No Child Left Behind. Um, the state is going to pursue the development of a state assessment tool to measure uh, math and reading at grades 3, 5, 6, and 7. So that's a bit of a change. We will still, uh, main learning results always has had a requirement for us to create local assessment systems. That will still uh, be something that we'll be charged with doing and we are working on, but that will not be the method for which we'll report for um, adequate, adequate yearly progress under No Child Left Behind. So there'll be an assessment, a state level assessment in reading and math in grades three, five, six, and seven. Um, update on future direction planning. And many of you uh, were able to participate um, in our uh, future direction planning um, uh, review that took place just a couple of days ago. Um, we had the entire teaching staff and representatives from other uh, other. Uh, groups within our educational community. Uh, we had community leaders, some town council members were present, chief of police, um, several students, school board members. And I think this really is going to help us do a few things. One, it keeps our plan alive, um, that if you talk about it, it becomes a living document. Um, we've always been very good, and, and the school board has been very good about at budget time, we take a look at the plan, what kinds of things need to happen. Um, and we've really focused on our long-range goals. But I think by bringing everyone back together again, it, it helps reinforce the importance of ownership on a part of the entire district and all the teachers um, to help keep that, that plan as something that just doesn't sit on the shelf. The next step will be the data that we reviewed and the information that came out of that workshop will be brought to a future direction planning team. Um, that group We'll take a look at the strategic goals, which ones do we need to continue, and do we need to add, add any goals, um, and also take a look at what, what kinds of action teams might need to be created if there's significant work to be done in any particular area. Um, and that will then hopefully all be ready by the end of this school year so that at this time next year we will have the plan um, as it is now, but extended out to 2000 and 2009. Um, but I thought the workshop was great. Um, people left feeling, I think, pretty positive about it. It's always a risk when you have something the first day the teachers are back, uh, that we can keep that focus, but I think uh, we did a very good job. And we had a facilitator from NESDEC who helped us with that. I think uh, it's also going to be uh, great to have someone from the outside take a look at all the data from that workshop and try to make some sense out of it, because sometimes we live with something so much ourselves um, it's, it's sometimes good to have someone from the outside um, take a look at our plans and, and then make some sense out of the information. Uh, the Education Foundation, quick update. Um, they did have a meeting a couple of weeks ago that Elaine and I attended. Um, they are planning to move forward. They didn't take an official vote on it, uh, but there is, uh, I got a real sense that they are going to move forward with a capital campaign, um, which should begin sometime um, in the fall. And um, lastly, the district leadership team um, met um, uh, last week, uh, had a discussion about goals, and we did identify some goal areas which I would like to share. Um, and these are just some areas that we think that either the district leadership team themselves as an organization or the district uh, will need to focus on this year. Uh, one, obviously, is the extension of our future direction plan. Um, continued work on the local assessment system. Um, and some of these, I know that when the school board just had their recent discussion, discussion about their goals uh, really um, uh, meshed quite nicely because they also talked about what is the plan for laptops after 2004. Um, another goal was the implementation of the newly created supervision and evaluation plan. Um, and 
what kind of another one has to do with what kind of administrative software, which we talked about last year at budget time. Um, do we need as a district to help report all of this information? Um, and also as a district, how are we going to, as we look at our local assessment system, take all of this, admit, this data, put it together under one system? Um, so hopefully we'll make that decision this year. Another goal is something we want to do this year that we talk about a lot, but we don't spend t enough time doing it, that as a team, the district leadership team would really like to take some, a particular area and spend um, in a retreat setting um, some significant time on really taking an issue, picking it apart, and coming up with some actions or a plan on how we're going to address that issue. That's it. We can move on to the principal's report. Um, Nancy, the middle school. Good evening. Getting ready for tonight's meeting, I realized I didn't have anything written down to say, or I usually don't have anything written down, but just a list. But while I've been sitting there, I've been able to make quite a list, um, which is good because I looked over at my colleague, Jeff Shedd, and I think he has four or five pages, so mine's not quite that long, but we'll work on it. Um, first, on behalf of all the middle school people, I would like to say thank you to George Entwistle as well, too. Um, at a time when he joined the board, I think he really helped middle school particularly grow and learn and deal with some community feedback that was less than positive at the time. And we turned that around into a very constructive type of activity and helped us grow and be a better place. So thank you very much, George, uh, for that. We'd also, of course, like to congratulate, I know he's gone, so he won't hear the story, but that's okay, our colleague, Gary Lenoy, who, when I first came to Cape Elizabeth many long years ago, um, Gary Lenoy was already here, by the way, first of all, and we worked together in, in he, no, he wasn't a student, <laughs> 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 he was a teacher. Oh, that's good. I do remember him as we, a student. You want to let me tell you about a few other goals we have for our district <laughs> leadership team this year. Now, <laughs> Mr. Lenoy was a teacher. <laughs> And um, he taught what we called industrial arts at the time. About four or five years into our working together, Gary was recognized as the National Industrial Arts Teacher of the Year. For that, he won an all-expense-paid trip to Akron, Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> flown by People's Airline, <laughs> flying out of Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> he got caught in a snowstorm. <laughs> and couldn't get back to school in time, and he was stuck in Newark. And as I was sharing that, recalling that memory with Gary, saying I hope that being the distinguished educator for Apple was far better than that, um, he shared with me that that was the last time his wife flew with him anywhere. She will not fly. <laughs> Send her a note, let her know Peoples has gone out of business. We, we think they can do well. But certainly, our whole success with laptops, as well as technology, Gary Lenoy certainly um, gives a lot of work to and time to the middle school, and so we feel that's a very well-deserved award and glad he could be recognized at a national level. Speaking of that, uh, last Thursday on August 21st, we had our new student orientation where we welcomed at that time about 26 new students to the middle school. It was also the same day that Gary and Beverly Bisbee were running the new I-team training for our seventh grade students. And they had 11 students who were able to come that day. And one of the former I-team members, or current, he's still current um, I-team member, but now he's an eighth grade I-team, um, to help train them. And it was great to see all that excitement. The laptops are here. The, the maintenance staff did a great job doing the cabinets. Um, they're ready, and the teachers are ready. One of the things middle school people were busy with over the summer is lots of summer work, a lot of it around looking at assessments, coordinating and re reviewing what they have done so far, curriculum revisions, and then also technology. And the eighth grade team, credit especially to Mary Murphy, Steve Price, and Paul Casey, who I think went to just about every technology thing they could this summer. And throughout the summer, I'd get an email from one of them saying, oh, Nancy, if you have time, look at my new website. It's not quite done yet, but look at this. Or someone else would write and say, I just made an iMovie. What do you think? And it was great. They are really excited about this. Um, they've shared that with the rest of the team. The rest of the team has been working on that as well, too. And they've worked with buddies since last June, um, their buddies being fellow seventh grade teachers. So um, I think we're ready for another exciting year with the laptops as well. We are, our enrollment's a little bit bigger than what we anticipated. Uh, we have 615 students uh, registered. We did get, once again, for 
I think this is about the third year in a row, we, our largest group of new students is coming to the eighth grade. Um, as for any one group, we have nine new eighth graders. So that's a little bit different trend than we had observed um, over past decades or year time spans. And it does move our average teacher load of students in the seventh and eighth grade to 116, which is a little bit above where we were and gets us further away from that optimal of 80 that we would like to get to someday. So uh, we know we have some work ahead of us, and that's good. Um, fifth grade is um, at, we have 154 fifth graders. We have, let's see, 143 seventh graders, 154 seventh graders. And um, I mean, it's 143 sixth graders, 154 seventh graders, and 164 eighth graders. So several years ago, we had a class, and I know people sometimes thought of it as a bubble. Well, that was a bubble. We are bubbling um, still, and um, we do have a large eighth grade class. So we look forward to working with them. Wow. But we, those eighth graders aren't that much larger than the fifth or the seventh. Uh, no, they, but they are the largest group at 164, but the 5th and 7th are just close behind them. Right. And then the 6th grade is our small group right now at 143. So um, mm -hmm. we will be using all of our nooks and crannies and spaces, but we are ready for them and um, people are excited. We are finding out an interesting trend we've always had in Cape Elizabeth. Um, been a place where people have shopped and have come to look at our schools and do things. But with more of our information on the website, this summer especially, we met, um, in June, we met probably three or four families that had no connection even to the state of Maine, other than they looked us up on the websites and decided this was a school system they wanted their children to be at. Other people usually have their coming home to Maine or they're relocating, they're transferring their business. These are people who work out of their homes or have businesses that they don't have to be in any one particular spot. And um, they are very honest about well, we don't know that much about you, but this is what we know. We found you on the website, and we decided this is where we wanted to bring our family. So we yeah. probably have more of that in the future. You, you sort of mentioned the sixth grade being small. Um, I just wanted to sort of mention that still 20 students more than the current incoming senior class. Yes, it, <laughs> and small would be relative for that our other classes. Right. Our largest class is 164. So just within our own little, little school community. Right. Um, is that your, that's a good clarification. Um, well, lots of staff really felt really great about Tuesday's workshop at Barillo's, and they mentioned that, and just a nice way to get started to revisit those things, all of the things people have said already, but just from the staff really feeling that that was a very positive send-off. And yes, they are focused on getting ready for the students coming on Tuesday, but it was nice to also start with a little bit larger look at that. Yesterday, we had a series of um, meetings and things, but compliments to two groups who presented. First of all, the team leaders did a wonderful presentation presenting the FERPA information, which is mandatory information that we go over every year. Um, I had presented that for a number of years, and on a performance assessment, I was not scoring that high, so I handed that off to a next capable group, the team leaders, and um, they presented last year, which was very memorable. This year it was outstanding, so I think you can quiz any middle school staff member on FERPA, which is Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and they will know it because the team leaders did a, an involved um, learner. You couldn't be a passive learner. You had to be an active learner in this and recalling information from the past. They did a great job. Compliments to them. The other group that had um, some very involved and critical information to share with the members of the um, CIA team, the Curriculum Instruction Assessment Team that Sarah Simmons heads up. And they worked a lot this summer to get ready. And this is a lot about the local assessment system as it pertains to main learning results, as it pertains to No Child Left Behind. Lots of information. It seems like lots of hoops. But Sarah and her group did a very good job of trying to sift through that and highlight what was the most important things to bring out. And I think the group of presenters did a wonderful job of getting us started in the right atmosphere. One thing to look forward to, we did receive official notification about two weeks ago now that the eighth graders this year, when they take their MEAs in March, will be taking them online. They will take them on their computers. So um, that's going to be exciting. With Gary's help, we know we'll all be ready. And we're just looking forward to a great school year and exciting learning ahead.
Any questions? No questions. Thank you, Nancy. Tom, I think it's your turn. Can, you need help getting up here, or are you all set? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, Tom. <laughs> you ready for me? After yes. that mocking? <laughs> it is good to see everybody. I wanted to add my congratulations to Gary Lenoy. I can't think of anybody more deserving of an award recognition than Gary. He's a pleasure to work with, and uh, he deserves that. And also, to George and Whistle, congratulations on your new job. Uh, we'll all miss you here, but I think you made terrific contributions, not just to the school, but the whole community. George is in charge of No Child Left Behind paperwork up at campus. <laughs> Good luck, George. <laughs> I, I think if, if Pond Cove were a sports franchise, I could say we had a very successful off season. Nancy mentioned that all the schools do uh, so what we call summer work, and it's become more and more focused over the years. Uh, besides that, we had uh, an opportunity through the generosity of the Educational Foundation to do what we call literary institute, literacy institute for second graders, first and second graders who need a little extra boost in their reading and writing and speaking. Thanks to the efforts of the reading team, that's Becky Swift, Deborah Jordan Pearson, and Suzanne Hamilton, our application was successful and Karen Abbott, a uh, first grade teacher, taught the program for four weeks and saw 16 different children. But part of the commitment uh, for when you receive a uh, grant is to follow up with good data on tracking the kids. So we'll be reporting back gratefully to the foundation. And it's also useful information for us. Uh, it's great for the school to do that. And sometimes in the past when we've done it, we've been able to incorporate activities like this in the regular budget or get grant money. So it's, a, it's an exciting thing to do. We did seem to have a big summer for literacy. Um, we've talked about spelling a lot internally over the years, and uh, a group took two days in August to look at the research at spelling, to talk about different methods of teaching it and making it real so good spelling shows up in kids' writing. And we're going to follow up on that on our first late start day. And you're probably aware that we've been doing uh, guided reading and guided writing for years, and the uh, driving force behind that, uh, we, we found there's new information about integrating phonics instruction into that approach to teaching reading and writing. Um, the group not only looked at the new material, but uh, teachers in grades K, 1, and 2 are going to be piloting that approach, combining it with spelling, and uh, we'll be following up to see how effective it is. So that's exciting. Uh, the third really focused meeting was we, we revisit our commitment to everyday math on a periodic basis and the group met over the summer to take a look at where we're doing by grade level, agree on the benchmarks to see where we are in terms of professional development. And one of the outcomes of that was we now have in the possession of each teacher a more or less schedule pacing throughout the year. So week by week, just make sure that we're literally close to being on the same page. I think it was being done anyway, but now it's risen as something we'll all share. And I guess part of our preseason work for our team efforts would be, we have for the past few years done an observational survey for, it's available to all entering first graders, um, whether you've gone to kindergarten here or not. And the reading team and other recruits do a gentle, interesting literacy assessment on the entering first graders, and that data goes to the families and the teachers. That, that got done a couple of weeks ago. Um, besides our successful mission vision work, which Tom and Nancy referred to, Ponco worked on the uh, local assessment system, and I think we feel better about it, thanks to the work of Sarah and the CIA. And uh, this morning, we had Patrick O'Shea come down and help us discuss and see where we are with our uh, developmental reading assessment that we do in K1 and 2. And we have our own version, which I think is just as good or maybe even better than the commercial one in grades three and four. And besides talking about how we assess and why we assess, there was a lot of talk about using that data, not just because somebody wants to just do it, but to improve instruction. So that was uh, a very profitable half day for us. And the other time has been spent, it's almost symbolic. Um, yes, the, the custodians and maintenance people had some extra time. They did a great job getting the school fit for opening, and the teachers have been coming in on their own, not just to set up classrooms and get the material ready, but to make initial contact with parents. So I, I think we're ready to have another great year. Now, if Nancy would assist me to my seat, I'd oh, be there. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. Thank you, Tom. Okay, Jeff, high school. <laughs> I 
actually have only one and a half pages. <laughs> What's the font? Translated into one and a half minutes. That's my goal. Okay, I don't think I'll make that. Um, on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we start with grade nine only. We have good, good, good success, I think, last year, starting off with just ninth graders and new students as well. Um, Wednesday, everybody comes, and we've got some good stuff planned for the entire day, those days. Um, we, our teachers did do a whole lot of work over the summer. There were two major sort of themes of a good amount of that work, and one was obviously English and math teachers in particular working on refining their common assessments that they'd done a lot of work on last year in light of some changes in the guidelines that came down from the state in June, um, with the uh, local assessment system guide, which clarified some things that the state expects from uh, from schools. So that was actually helpful. So, But there was a lot of adapting and revising, and although there is, um, as you've been reading in the newspaper, frustration about some of the bureaucratic aspects of the local assessment system and record keeping, um, I think at the end of the summer the teachers were feeling pretty good about the work that they've done and the quality of the assessments and the educational value, potentially, of what they've created for kids. Um, so that, that's, oh, and the other part, the other sort of theme for a small group of us, and I was involved in it to some extent, is we are piloting, experimenting with a uh, freshman study skills program this year for all freshmen. Um, and going into it, we know that uh, it, will, it will succeed or fail depending on to what extent the content area teachers in math and English and all the other areas reinforce the skills that we're teaching. So we're putting a good amount of work into explaining to teachers what we're going to be doing in the study skills thing and then giving them some suggestions. And actually yesterday we went over some some basic steps we were asking all ninth, ninth grade teachers to follow that are consistent with the study skills that we're going to be teaching the kids. Um, so stay tuned to that. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see how it will be working. I'm actually going to be teaching one section of it. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. Um, on Monday, our staff took a half of the the, the building flex day that the schools have um, to begin to get ready for our uh, self-study, really year and a half or almost two years of self-study. We got a letter about a month or so, well, just a couple weeks ago from NEAS, the accreditation agency, saying that our visit is going to be in the fall of 2005, October 16th to 19th, so we've got over two years to sort of get this process completed, but there's an awful lot of work to do in that two years. The first immediate task that we need to do, which we've already begun to work on, is looking at uh, the school's mission and expectations for student learning and civic and social expectations, which NIESC is looking for schools to define at this point, um, which is a topic I've met, I've met with groups of parents and students and alumni, and I need some input from the board at a hopefully not, not too distant uh, um, about what the board thinks, and then I want to have some conversations back and forth with the faculty. And so we spent a long time, um, we spent the entire half day sort of getting ready for that health, health that self-study. Um, uh, I'm lucky because I've got, a, I think, a good steering committee forum. It's being chaired by Angela Schifani in our foreign language department, who also has been very actively involved in the CIA team, so it's great to have that connection there. And I think she's going to do a great job. Um, but between now and Thanksgiving, my hope is that by Thanksgiving we can have a new mission and expectation statement in place for the high school. Um, because then the intensive self-study work really begins the second semester around January. Um, I'm also sort of still working on occasionally delivering progress reports to NIESC from our accreditation report 10 years ago, primarily related to ADA accessibility. Um, and we have, I have yet another report due on September 2nd telling them that there's a referendum that's scheduled, what the language of the referendum is, and what the timeline proposed would be if the referendum passes for the work at the high school. So NIESC is very curious about the work that we keep telling them that we are going to be doing. So I, I think they'll be glad to receive the more, the more specific information that I can give to them now. Um, I do want to mention specifically the, um, the custodians. The building really does look great. Um, they've done a really good job this summer. They have had extra time, but they always work hard. Uh, the maintenance crew has done a great job reno totally renovating three new classrooms, and when Ernie's crew goes through and renovates classrooms, it's just a fantastic job that they do. They really do, and they've, on top of that regular work that they've done, they've crafted one small office for us uh, because we're a missing office space, and they've also crafted one small classroom out of what had been a storage space um, so that we can, we can meet the space needs um, that we have for running the high school, which I'm confident that we'll be able to do. So kudos to them, definitely. Questions? 
questions thank you now we can move on to the committee reports the finance subcommittee elaine um, yes the finance committee uh, met prior to our school board meeting this evening um, we did have in our packet um, a technology equipment lease that we'll be voting on under new business uh, later this evening um, we also discussed uh, a workshop that both Pauline and Ernie um, are attending today up in Belfast regarding uh, a facilities management template uh, that involves uh, software and a program being run by the state that would allow us to uh, monitor um, capital improvement projects on our schools based on the age of the equipment, et cetera. Um, and we went got into a little bit of the details about it. Uh, it would have um, some very distinct advantages for us, but it also would come along with a, um, a budget implication. So we'd we be considering that also. Um, but there was some discussion, and we'll find out more when Pauline and, and Ernie do come back from Belfast. Um, there was um, uh, no warrants to be signed uh, today, but I imagine there'll be a lot more later. And that was it. Okay. Um, and our policy subcommittee, um, Jennifer will now be our new policy um, chair. Um, well, we haven't met yet, and our first meeting is planned for uh, Wednesday, October 1st at noon, although I'm not sure whether that will be changed to a Tuesday or a Thursday. That's correct. Right. But right now it's October 1st. Okay. Um, and we have no unfinished business, so we will move on to new business. Um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions. The following individuals are recommended um, at the middle school and the high school <coughs> with for field hockey at the middle school, uh, Kim Huckel and Anne-Marie Dion and two positions at the high school, one in JV soccer, Amanda Johnson, and JV field hockey, Jeremy LaRose. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept the uh, nominations as presented. Okay. A second? Jennifer? Um, any questions or comments? All in favor? Five, zero. Uh, next on our list, are, uh, is a recommendation for co-curricular fee positions? Uh, there is a, a memo on co-curricular fee stipends in the high school co-curricular, and some of them uh, in the middle school are actually athletics that got put into this, into this group. But uh, at the high school co-curricular, speech coach Hannah Jones, assistant speech coach Kevin McNulty, debate coach Gretchen McNulty, and special education department chair Ben Raymond. Uh, middle school, this falls under athletics. Uh, Gary Newell, eighth grade boys soccer. Sarah Kinsella, eighth grade girls soccer. Joe Hendrickson, seventh grade girls soccer. Jerry McQuinney, cross country. Joe Doan, cross country. Susan Ray, tennis. And Ben Putnam, tennis. Do we have a motion for co-curricular and middle school athletics? Jennifer? I move we um, accept the recommendation um, for co-curricular and athletic key positions um, as presented. Okay. Uh, second? Second. Okay. And um, questions, comments? None. All in favor? Five, zero. Okay. Um, and then we can move on, as Elaine had mentioned, for the lease purchase agreement for computers and, and um, technology equipment. Do we have a motion for this? Elaine. Um, I'd like to move that we authorize uh, a tax exempt lease technology pur purchase agreement for $51,905 as described in our packets. Okay. A second? Second. Ken? Um, questions, comments? None. All in favor? Five, zero. 
Uh, and lastly, well, you have to, oh, we have to give a second one. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, okay. I'll make a movement um, yes. to authorize um, another tax exempt lease technology purchase for $57,453 um, as described in your packets. Okay. Um, second? I second that motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Five, zero. Okay. I think that concludes everything under new business. Um, and I'd li like to just go through um, the dates for future meetings, which the fi our, our next school board meeting um, is actually September 16th. It has been moved out a week. Um, and the finance subcommittee will meet at 6.30. The regular school board meeting will be at 7.30. And it will be in the high school library, not in the town council chambers. Our school board workshop will be Tuesday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock in the high school library. Um, and we will be talking about curriculum and assessment. And right now the policy, um, the policy meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 1st, but that may change. Correct, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's really it. Um, so we need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Someone? Uh, Elaine? I move that we adjourn this okay. meeting. Okay, second? Second. Jennifer? All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you.